In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the Creative Console Studio by Monogram. Before I begin, if you're somebody that's looking for an opinion on this piece of gear, I think it's necessary to say that I got this unit for free from the amazing folks over at Monogram. Also, if you use the link in the description below, you'll get $40 off the purchase of one of the studio consoles. I do receive an affiliate commission from that. I think that definitely adds some sort of bias to my opinion on the piece of gear. With all that out of the way, let me tell you my experience so far with the short period of time that I've had this. So what is the Creative Console Studio? In their own words, it's a modular and customizable controller designed to enhance digital creativity. In the box, you get five modules altogether. The first one is the Essential Keys module. This comes with two customizable actions that you can do. You can press it or you can press and hold. Next, you get two dial modules with three knobs on each module. With each knob, you have three customizable actions. You can turn it, you can press it like a normal button, or you can press and turn. Next is the orbiter module, and this is a wheel on the outside and a touch sensitive or pressure sensitive Joey stick on the inside. And the last module is the most important. This is the monogram core. It's the brain that powers all the other modules that you attach to it. And this is the module where the USB is connected. And with all these pieces together, it's truly modular. You can basically set this up however you want to. One important point to point out is that the pins need to go in a specific way. So you can't put the pins outwards. They have to be facing into a receptor. So if you put it this way, it won't work, it won't light up. You would need to face it this way in order to go in and then it will start working. Same thing goes for the other pieces. So right here are the pins. Notice if I put this module like this, it won't work. But if I were to change the pins this way, it will start working and this way. So. It can be set up in any way, shape, or form. It's just that you have to have those pins going in the right way. The console won't work until you install the software on your computer, and that was very simple to do. Just go to the website, works on Windows or Mac, download the driver, install it like any normal driver, and you'll get that creator software up and running. So once you got the monogram creator window open, everything here is customizable. Down here, we have options to show the best matches for the specific console that I have. Right here, I just selected midtones. It changed the color of all of my different parameters here, and I'll just add some more. So now that I have all of these, I'm gonna switch over to my editing. What I would first like to point out is everything is labeled here on the creator window. If I break off any of this, immediately you can see that it reacts to the interface. I could take this off and then it'll all be put back. It's all immediate. That is so cool. Next, you can actually see when you're adjusting a parameter. So right here on the jog wheel, I can see that I'm moving it on the creator window. Let me just do an overview of the default parameters in the editing window when you first install this. You can change the colors of any of them, and you can also change the photo that goes right here. So if I select this clip, we have the scale adjustable, we have the rotation and the opacity. If I were to click on scale, this will bring up my dial settings. And now I can customize what happens when I turn it, what happens when I press and turn it, and then also what happens when I press it. If I were to turn it, it would scale. And then if I were to press and turn it, it scales by 10. As, so it's scaling much quicker as I turn. And then if I were to tap it, it resets the scale. The same thing can be done with the other parameters. If I go to customize, I can just see what happens. Rotation, it will rotate a little. Or if I press and turn, it will rotate a lot. If I tap it, it will reset. On the second module, we have a timeline zoom. We can select a track. So right now it's on the top, then I move it down and it selects all the ones on the next one so on and so forth. So you can select a specific track by moving this one. If anything, I think I would change this one to something different because it's a little slow. And if I were to be selecting tracks, I would just hit the track select forward tool, hold shift. And I think it's quicker to select a track that way. The third default one is select any edit point. So any edit point along the timeline, it will stop the playhead at that point. I think the other cool thing here is that you can add different actions to it. So I think that will happen in sequence. Move clip up and nudge clip right. Highlight this clip and press and see if it works. 
So it moved it up, moved it up, and it's nudging it, it's, it is nudging it right. So you can see right here, I moved it up four times, and you can see by this negative four that it has nudged it right four times. That's really cool. So you can set up a sequence of actions to happen every single time you press the button. Let's move on to the jog wheel. This one's pretty straightforward. If I turn it, it's going to go left or right. One thing about the jog wheel that I didn't realize that I was gonna use it a lot for is this action right here, just going left and right. For example, just earlier today, I had a producer behind me asking for different spots in the video, and we were gonna cut at the beginning and ending of the video because we needed to chop off the tail ends. And normally I would take maybe my mouse and move, or I would use my keyboard to increment in between them, but using the jog wheel made the process so much smoother. Immediately when I was asked like, hey, can you move it back just a little bit? All I had to do was go up here and move the jog wheels. It just makes it more dynamic and tactile versus clicking up here and scrolling. The biggest thing that I noticed is how much the amount of stress I was putting on my wrist by using the mouse versus lack of stress I was putting on my wrist by utilizing the jog wheel. And that built up over time will not only save time, but also help my wrist from developing carpal tunnel. The other thing that you can do with this is go left and right by using the joystick. But I didn't use that feature at all because unfortunately this leads me to one of my only gripes with the system. Currently at the time of this upload, with my setup, there's a bug where randomly the joystick will get stuck sending information to Premiere Pro and you can't do anything about it until you unplug it and plug it back in. It's just playing. <laughs> I don't know how to get the cursor to stop playing. Just gonna unplug it and plug it back in. So I unplugged it. I still can't stop the <laughs> playhead. Oh no. Oh, it stopped. In the help section of their website, I found that others were also having this issue. So I did ask the people over at Monogram about this. They are aware of it. They are coming up with the solution. So hopefully by the time you do watch this video, this bug won't even be an issue. Currently my solution is just to turn off the tilt X and tilt Y. So I don't use the joystick, but I still use the turntable a bunch on the orbiter. This setup has worked for me without any issues. The last piece is the essential keys module. By default, this is Razor all tracks. So if I click that, it will Razor all the tracks, your play stop button. And then if I wanted to maybe select these clips and ripple delete, I can do that too. I think these ones would change the most completely depending on how you would utilize them. If you want to customize right here, if you press and hold it, there's nothing set there. So again, you can just press it or you could set something up so when you press and hold it, it will do a different action. And another option is when you are switching the whole thing around, so say I turn it this way, what will end up happening is you can rotate your console. So it can actually be represented as to what is really in front of you. So if I rotate this back, then I want to make sure that I rotate it the right way. I don't think I've ever really utilized a tool like this when it comes to video editing. Back when I was an audio editor, there were whole mixing soundboards that were basically huge MIDI controllers that you could control things like Pro Tools. I never really thought about that for video editing. And with something like the Creative Console, you can utilize all of those concepts. That being said, I am finding new ways that I can incorporate this into my workflow every single day to make it more efficient. But I do also know that every video editor situation is truly unique in how they like to work with their footage and tell stories. So when it comes to something like this, will it help you in the studio? I don't know, that's up to you and your situation. If you can find ways that can manipulate these knobs and buttons in a way that can make it more efficient, then I think it's definitely worth the purchase. They do offer a 30 day money back guarantee. And again, if you do use the link in my description, there is that discount. As for the joystick issue that I was having, I'm thinking that this is probably something that started when they updated the interface of Premiere Pro. And even personally with my own Premiere Pro products, I even had to update a lot of my own transitions and send that update out. So I'm not too worried about the joystick thing. And like I said, I am finding ways to utilize this to make my workflow faster every single day. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is something like the Creative Console of interest to you or not?
Until next time, my name is Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance.